Let there be peace. Let there be peace. So frowns fly away like albatross and skeletons foxtrot from cupboards. So war correspondents become travel show presenters and magpies bring back lost property, children, engagement rings, broken things. Let there be peace. So storms can go out to sea to be angry and return to me calm. So the broken can rise up and dance in the hospitals. Let the aged Ethiopian man in the grey block of flats peer through his window and see Addis before him. So his thrilled outstretched arms become frames for his dreams. Let there be peace. Let tears evaporate to form clouds, cleanse themselves and fall into reservoirs of drinking water. Let harsh memories burst into fireworks that melt in the dark pupils of a child's eyes and disappear like shoals of silver darting fish. And let the waves oh. reach the shore with a shh. It's such a, a beautiful poem, Lem, but also Thanks. literally brings me to the verge of tears. And I think I'm a tough old nut. Um, you, you've seen a lot, Mariella, you've seen a lot. <laughs> Well, we're seeing a lot at the moment, aren't we? And I think yeah, it's just so yeah. opposite, um, you know, those words. Do you ever return to your own work for comfort? Do you ever think, ah, oh, I wrote something about that. I'm going to look at it now and, and, and see if it <laughs> Mariella, heals me. That's a little bit like looking back at your diary, you know. But what's beautiful about this poem is, is uh, which there's time for, actually, but is, is it's, it's on the building, it's on the side of a building in Addis Ababa. It's on the side of a giant structure uh, at the University of Huddersfield. And whenever there is conflict, such as the one we're seeing and going through at the moment, somebody will post it to say thank you. And I know that um, the poets of uh, and the writers are, of Ukraine are under threat uh, and having to protect themselves because one of the first things that goes um under dictatorship is the freedom to write which is why mm. pen the international pen who you'll know a lot about um do so much to get uh poets and writers released from jail it's funny isn't it the written word is the first thing to be uh, clamped down on when it comes down well. to um, dictatorships well, we know why that is, though, because it's so powerful, as we just saw with your poem. Now, let's move on to something a bit more joyous. Um, yeah. Your debut children's book. Um, did you have a particular child in mind when you set about this story? <laughs> um, if I'm really honest with you, I, I the child is in the book. If, if he would have enjoyed this book at that age, then I'd be happy. Uh, the central character. And I say that, I say that because... Um, it's a story that I, I really wanted to tell w when I started uh, writing and performing at 18, 19, 20 years of age. I used to do a lot of work with this age group, five, around five years of age, the, the, the infant school, preschool age. I used to do lots of, um, uh, uh, not workshops, um, touring with a storytelling group called um, Telltales, who and it's just great to get back there because I think the the child um, at five is a very critical audience. You know, if they don't like it, they'll just uh, turn off, you know, and the parent will feel that as well. Um, I think so, it's fair to say that children at any age are an extremely critical audience. So you're yeah. a very brave man for a, yeah. a, attempting to please them. I, I wonder what you want. Um, a child reading this book to take away from it. It's interesting to me that, you know, you having grown up in care, that the, the theme of yes. home, the search for it, and then finding your place is, is always pre prevalent in your work, no matter what age you're writing for. It's funny, um, Mariella, I'm judging the Children's Illustration um, Award for the Nibbies, the National um, Book Awards um, 
British Book Awards um, administrated uh, by the bookseller. And so I'm seeing lots of children's books and I am proud of this because the character has no parents and is on a journey and feels lost on his birthday. It sounds really sad, <laughs> but when I look at this book, my own book, and I look at the others that I'm judging, I'm helping to, um, I'm, I'm looking at in detail, joy is really important. And there's a lot of joy in, uh, in Don't Ask the Dragon. But yes, the central character has no family. It is his birthday. And he's looking for where he can go on his birthday. And he asks the people that he, he meets, animals. He says, where can I go? And the bear growls, I don't know. And, uh, and they all tell him, but whatever you do, don't, don't ask the dragon. Because they're all frightened of the dragon. And, um... Sounds like my household. I think I, 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 <laughs> you haven't modelled that dragon on me, have you? Um, I have not. <laughs> <laughs> we have seen, uh, and you'll be, you know, witnessing it at the moment uh, during your judging process, a, a really positive explosion, I think, in children's literature when it comes to the range of experiences they reflect. You know, when I think back to my reading as a child, you know, everyone lived in a perfect family with a mother and a father who looked, you know, perfect yeah. and served meals and, you know, everyone played their uh, prescribed roles and and, and now yes. we have protagonists from all different backgrounds and and types of family and um, how much do you, th do you wish it had been the case when when you were a child and perhaps more importantly how much difference do you think that makes to children growing up in the real world oh my gosh I, I mean I don't have children myself um, and and I'm happy for that to seem like it works against me but if you see me working with children you'll see that um, that I'm I love what I do and they love it too. That's all I can say. And you can't say that unless it's true. Anyway, um, the book, I mean, the bookshop and children's writing is actually right on the front, front line of cultural change. So uh, the books will, as you say, uh, they will uh, look at the questions of race, uh, questions of gender uh, are being looked at in children's books in a very s serious uh, way, but also with humour again, because this is storytelling. Um, I, I mean, I, I think of children's writers as being more rock and roll than the so-called punk poets, Mariella. <laughs> Because, yeah, because I think that's fair enough. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you get away with that, Lem Sisse. Um, <laughs> and thank you very much for joining us uh, on Times Radio. Don't Ask the Dragon is published by Canongate Books and out now. And wasn't that poem just absolutely mesmerizing? Thank you for that too, Lem. 